Ford High School Weekly is brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. And by Rib Crib, smoking good stuff since 92. Welcome to Ford High School Weekly. I'm your host, Deanna Monte. This week, we're checking in with the ESPN number one point guard in the class of 2024, Bartlesville, David Castillo. We'll also meet with the Union Red Hawks girls wrestling state champions. But first, let's catch up with David Castillo. Point guard from Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Well, joining me now is David Castillo, the bucket getter from the Bruins over there in Bartlesville. David, how's it going? Going good, going good. How are you? Not too bad, not too bad. I know basketball season never takes a break, never gets some time off. Summer is hitting us hard right now. How's it going for you? Uh, summer's going really well. Really love the competition that you are there. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, you know how we do it over here. This is your second interview with us here on Ford High School Weekly. So we'd like to get to know you as a person before we get to the hardwood and ask those hard hitting questions. So you mind if we, we, we get to in your personal life a little bit? Oh, yeah, for sure. All right. First question I got to ask you, man. Haven't talked about this too much. I know you do a lot of traveling during the summer. And so a good way to pass the time is, you know, TV shows and movies and different things like that. So for you, what's your favorite movie or TV show that you're you're clicking into right now? Uh, favorite TV show right now is probably Marvel's Daredevil. Um, I really love how intense and how drama it is. I like how, like that you can't see and you can fight everybody. Um, <laughs> So, so you're so you're a Marvels fan, huh? Marvels fan. So before before Daredevil, and when you go back to the Marvel comics and the Marvel movies, who's your favorite, you know, superhero in that in that world? Uh, Hulk. Uh, he's always been my favorite growing up. So, really? You know, yeah, I like I like how that he was bigger than everybody and stronger than everybody and faster than everybody. And, I mean, uh, but emotionally, he doesn't seem so stable. I mean, I guess they work it out in the later movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's stable now. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I, yeah, yeah, I loved, I loved him. Loved him. For sure, for sure. All right, so that leads me to, to kind of to my next question. Like, we mentioned all the traveling, and we'll talk about that uh, later on throughout the interview for, for you. But to pass the time, what are some of the things that you do in the car or in, on the plane? Um, really just sleep. Uh, I really just sleep, knock myself out, put on some music, put on some nice tunes, maybe R and B, maybe a little bit of hip hop. You know, just keep me keep me sleep. All right, well, I got you know I gotta ask who who's the artist that you're <laughs> listening to nowadays. Uh, uh, so I can give you my top five. I, okay, um, sure. I put up the graphics, baby. <laughs> top five. Uh, Here we go from David. Let's get it. Uh, so top one, top one's got to be Yeet. Uh, he's a he's a new rapper, um, kind of up tempo. Um, number two right now is probably Drake. Uh, you know, okay, okay. Drake has always got to be in the top top five somewhere. Um, number three, number three has got to be Future, like his new his new album. Uh, you know, I've I've listened to Future in the past, but his new album is really really hit. Um, number four, I got to add an R and B rapper, uh, Bryson Tiller. Okay, uh, I listen to him. Yep, <laughs> and uh, number five. Um, it, it, it's a it's a battle, um, it's a battle between Lil Durk and uh, Playboy Cardi. Really? Okay, yeah. I didn't think I wasn't expecting that one right there. I thought you yeah. was gonna hit me with Kendrick in that top five. You know that? Yeah, I, I, listened, I listened to the new album. Um, you know, he still he still ain't reached my top five. Yeah, I think it's too lyrical for me. Uh, yeah. I like a little. I like a little more uh, up tempo hip hop. You know, so. I mean, it kind of, I mean, I understand with with your pace of play and everything. I, I understand, but yeah. I mean, that new album was fire. I can't I can't believe he's not in the top five. Oh, yeah. That was our yeah. literally our first top five here on Ford High School Weekly. I can you oh, well. you the first man. You the first. <laughs> well, coming up next, we got more with David Castillo here on Ford High School Weekly. Ford High School Weekly is brought to you by Billy Sims Barbecue. It's not just barbecue, it's Boomer Q. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking to David Castillo. Now, David, basketball season for school has been over for a while now, but summer ball is underway. But let's go back to, to school ball. How did you think the season went for you guys over there at Bartlesville? Um, I think the season went really well. Um, I think the whole season was a learning process for all of us. 
um, figuring each other out, learning our plays, like everything was just a learning process. I think we took a little bit too long to learn, uh, getting cut the first round. I think I think next season will be a really good season for us. So as far as going into your summer now and, and what you have to do to evolve your game, I mean, talk to the viewers a little bit about that. Basketball is kind of 365 for you guys nowadays, especially with AAU basketball and everything going on. So what's the summer been like so far? Um, the summer has been really good. Uh, this summer, I've really just been trying to work on evolving my game, you know, moving without the ball, um, communicating more, um, just stuff that can really prepare me for the college level. Um, just really improving on everything I can just to be prepared for that college level. So how does that even get approached with you? Is this something that coaches tell you you need to get better at, or is it something that you see individually or are there milestones you're looking to achieve? Like, How do you know what you need to get better with? Um, mainly from myself and my brother. Um, but, you know, coaches give us insight as well. Uh, but it's really just being me, my brother, my, and my dad. Um, you know, we really, you know, this season, this past season, there's been a lot of double teaming. So, uh, you know, we try to try to add some, add some more stuff to my game, moving without the ball, um, being more active on defense, uh, you know, just adding stuff like that, that can really help me. You know, everything is about preparing for college. You know, we always talk about preparing for college because, you know, you don't want to get to college and sit the bench. So, uh, you know, we try to do everything we can just to help prepare for college. And uh, they, they, they help me with the best insight. So, so for getting ready for that next level is the step there. You, but you mentioned at this level right now, you're seeing a lot of double teams. Is that something you anticipated? I mean, especially having a, a stellar freshman year and then having a, a really good sophomore year this year, is that something that you're anticipating more of next year? Or is that something that you're seeing a lot of now? Oh, I was seeing a lot of it last season, uh, more towards the end. Um, you know, I came out against Jinx, uh, and every time I caught the ball, um, they sent two. And uh, I was shocked, because um, not because I didn't see it coming, just because nobody's really done that yet. So I came out of the game. Uh, I came out in the game, and uh, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I was trying to split, trying to do everything I can, and uh, nothing was really working out. So we try to find solutions to help me uh, get surpassed that so they can't find two and find more ways to contribute in the team, with the team. All right, you already mentioned things you're getting better at for the summer and, and, and things that you're doing to evolve your game, but what are you doing to, you know, kind of have fun while have playing basketball this summer? Oh, I'm trying to hang out with my friends more, uh, you know, just build more team chemistry, mainly my, my, my players on the basketball team, just building more team chemistry, uh, you know, because last season I was really just always in the gym. Um, you know, trying to find that balance of, you know, not getting, you know, burnt out and, uh, you know, just hanging out with my friends. I'm trying to learn how to, you know, fish more. Uh, uh, but yeah, just, just trying to hang out more just a little bit. So that speaking of, what's that schedule like for, for some of the viewers who don't know? I mean, go ahead and break it down for us. I mean, for you as an individual, like how tasking is your your practices and, and the things you have to do to get ready and how many tournaments and week in and week out do you have to go to? Uh, so my schedule, um, you know, I wake up around 8 a.m., try to get a good breakfast in. Uh, we usually have skill development at 9 a.m., uh, for like an hour with the team, lifting for an hour. Uh, after that, uh, probably get home, grab a protein shake. Uh, got team practice for another hour. So for about two hours, uh, you know, that's whenever you get in like the video games and all the other stuff. And then we usually add another lifting session and then uh, another workout um, after that. And so we'll have, it'll be throughout like four and seven or like three and six, you know, depending on if I want to, you know, get, go hang out with my friends or not. Uh, but, you know, that's just usually the schedule. And on the weekends, uh, you know, I'm usually playing every weekend. Um, I rarely see like an off, uh, a off day, uh, but I just try to have fun with it. So it doesn't get so, bored. 
you get to travel to some pretty exciting places and go all over the country, you know, playing uh, AAU basketball and everything. So where are some of the places that you've been this summer? Uh, this summer I've been to Orlando, Florida. Uh, that was that was really cool. I got to got to say at Disney World, um, Indianapolis, and uh, just this past weekend we were in Kentucky. Wow, so pretty pretty exciting summer for her. For yeah. her. <laughs> been all over the place, man. Yeah. So I remember the last time we talked, you had just you know got the invite to USA Basketball and you went out there and pretty, had a pretty impressive showing out there as well. So what's that kind of treatment like? Are you still on the USA Basketball team? Do you have to try out again? What's that whole situation like for you? So I have to try it again. Um, for the U-17s, um, I actually go back in two weeks. Um, we're having a, a tryout. We had a training camp earlier, um, like two months, two months ago, something like that. Uh, you know, I, I think I did really well. Uh, you know, but USA, you know, you just got to compete, um, and try to fight for that spot again uh, for for the older age group. So speaking of that spot here recently, it all got announced that you were the number one point guard in your class. Uh, pretty impressive uh, title to hold. I mean, congratulations <laughs> on that, man. Thank you. So, so what does that say about like how is that in that situation, especially going to USA Basketball and being one of the number one players at your position at, in your class? How, how has that affected your game or how people look at you? Um, it's really it's really just made me uh, pay more attention. Um, you know, every game, you know, somebody's coming at me with, you know, their best skills or their best, their best, uh, you know, mentality. Um, everybody's trying to take my spot. So, uh, you know, I just try to go in the game, uh, play my game and, uh, you know, not let anybody take the spot that I have. So we asked you this last time when you came on the show, if these top rankings kind of hurt or help when you get onto a court and when you're facing other competition. So let me ask you this again. I mean, you got another year of experience with it, but this time you got the number one spot on your back, man. So is it is it a tool for you Can, or does it hurt or does it put a target on your back that when you go out there and you're, and you're one of the best players on the floor and, and one of the top ranked guys? Uh, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, you know, it, it, it reminds you that, you know, how hardworking you are, um, you know, that hard work just pays off, um, you know, because I put a, put in a lot of, a lot of, a lot of hours in the gym, uh, you know, but it can also be bad, uh, you know, you can just have an injury and then boom, you know, you drop down to number four and number five point guard. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of both worlds. So let's be honest, man. You you know you know the guy who was number one before you. Uh, when? Before you got. I mean, there's somebody had to be number one before you came out as number one. So do you remember who that was? Oh yeah, I know who that is. I just don't want to say his name. Is he? Has, have y'all been in communication at all? Is he fighting for a spot? Um, I mean, he's he's probably he's probably he's probably looking for a spot. Um. You know, a little friendly it is, competition. It is, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. When yeah. we come back, we'll talk with David about recruiting and what's next for him on the basketball court. Here on Ford High School Weekly. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly with, with David Castillo over here, the basketball player that everybody wants to know, the number one spots on ESPN and all the rankings from the point guard position. David, how's it going? Going really good. Going really yeah, good. so let's go ahead and talk about this college recruiting. I know it's a, it's a big thing, and it's one of the reasons that you've been putting in all the work and putting in all the, you know, the rough hours in the gym to kind of get ready for that next level. But a lot of coaches have been buying for your talent. So who are some of the guys who have been talking to you lately? Uh, some of the schools um, have been Kansas, Kansas State, OSU, uh, Tulsa, Arkansas, and uh, Gonzaga. 
So was, is there anything that kind of stands out from other these? You don't got to tell me which school is kind of standing out or, or doing something different, but are, are all these schools kind of the same in the way they pitch to you and, and, and stay in uh, constant communication with you or do other schools kind of stand apart? Um, other schools kind of stand apart. Um, you know, I'm not going to say which ones, you know, I like to keep it a little secret, uh, keep, keep the fans guessing, but, um, you know, other schools definitely stand apart. Uh, you know, they still can't, 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 uh, can't message me cause I'm still super young. Uh, I gotta wait till June 15th so they can contact me directly. So, um, everything has got to be through, you know, my parents' phone or my brother. Um, but yeah. <laughs> So, so how has that process been as of late? I mean, you know, we talked about it when you were a freshman and it's kind of intensified now. So as it starts to build up, how, how cool has it been? Um, it's been, it's been really cool. Uh, I love that, you know, college coaches want me to play at their school. Um, I think, you know, I like that they believe in me, uh, believe in my abilities. Um, and I like that, you know, once again, like they, they see that the hard work is paying off. So do college coaches get an opportunity to see y'all during the summer as well, or is it only during school ball? Both. Um, college coaches, uh, you know, they can come watch during AAU and school ball. Um, uh, AAU has a thing called live periods, uh, you know, where college coaches can come and watch you play, see your skills, um, you know, but they can only come at certain periods of time. Um, I think the same thing goes on with school ball. Uh, you know, but uh, they can always, uh, you know, come watch you practice or, uh, you, know, you know, watch you watch you play a school game. So I don't really know how that works all yet. Um, but, you know, you know, because the recruiting process is weird with NCAA and all their rules. But, uh, you know, college coaches try to come out as much as they can. You're just out there trying to get buckets. You're not worried about who's watching, huh? Fact. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> All right, well, last question before I get you out of here. I remember I asked you this uh, last time we talked, and I just wanted to see if your answer was still similar or the, uh, or the same or, or different at this point. So I asked you the first t time you we, we talked, what's your favorite part about the game? And I want to know, like, what for you right now in this moment in your life, what's your favorite part about playing basketball? Same answer in buckets <laughs> same, same, answer. <laughs> same answer i like it man i like it well yeah. david thank you so much for joining us today man and then good luck with everything in the in the summer and in the future during school ball as well yes sir thank you and congratulations on holding that down that number one point guard spot man yes sir yes sir thank you thank you appreciate we'll, it we'll talk soon up next, the Union Red Hawks took this year's Girls Wrestling State Championship. We'll meet these hardworking champions when Ford High School Weekly continues. Ford High School Weekly is brought to you by Billy Sims Barbecue. It's not just barbecue, it's Boomer Q. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. I'm Deanna Mata. In July 2021, Union High School started a girls wrestling team. In February 2022, the Red Hawks won a state championship in their first season of competition. Let's meet this team and their coach, Darren McAfee. The 90% of our team were first year, and some of them had never played or competed in a sport at all. What helped a lot too is when we brought all those together is we didn't have the bad habits to break of a former coaching style or a team, you know, culture that, you know, that they had to break away from. We were, de we were developing our own culture and they were all learning together. We all push each other to make sure we're all doing what we're supposed to do, um, showing each other moves, yeah, we just help each other out, then over time we get close and form a bond. It's just, it's just a matter of showing up and having fun. So for the champion match, I was making sure that I wasn't in my head because we had we were like five points behind and then then we got our girls um, pumped up so we can make sure we're winning it. 
And if we can't beat them on technique or experience because we're so young, we made dang sure that our kids were in shape and in better shape than our opponents and, and aggressive. We were more aggressive. That way, you know, because some of the teams coming up had a couple of years on us and, you know, it was a disadvantage to us. However, if we could outlast them for the first and second period, they're going to be winded and our kids is just now getting started. It's probably going to be tougher for, uh, for the people to beat us because we stick together, we're hard workers, and we don't stop until we make it. This has been really my most enjoyable year. And Union's had a successful wrestling program as well, but they never had, this was the very first girls. And so it was the very first girls, very first Red Hawk team. And so the pressure was on, I wanted to be the best and make the best. And, you know, when I made that statement of, we're gonna win state title. And, you know, that was our goal. And then state tournament, you know, we're the last people to leave there. It was 12-15 and we were leaving with that championship trophy. And one of my proudest moments in my life. Some people say, oh, girls wrestling is easier. It's, it's not. Congratulations to the Union Red Hawks girls wrestling team for the finish of their first season in the best way possible, a state championship. Go to yearview.com slash OK for highlights and check out our podcast and past episodes at yearview.com slash OK. Only the best in Oklahoma, like Bartos Bills David Castillo and the Union Red Hawks girls wrestling team make the Ford High School weekend. So thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Tiana Mike. Ford High School Weekly has been brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. And by Rib Crib, smoking good stuff since 92.